In the previous video, I drove all the way from Tampa, Florida to the Texas state line. Today we continue our journey west through the Lone Star State, a passing by Houston, San Antonio, the nice park in Junction where you can camp for free, then deep into the Texan desert where we may or may not see the mysterious Marfa lights, and eventually El Paso. So buckle up, because traveling Robert for the first time in Texas is next. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV. This video is sponsored by Custom Covers. Well, this is this looks kind of desolate out here. Oh, by the way, these here are the swampy lands of the Sabine River, which happens to be the boundary between Louisiana and Texas. And this boardwalk uh, right here is outside the Texas Welcome Center. By the front, they have this big Lone Star and the six flags of Texas, representing you know, Spain, France, Mexico, the Republic of Texas, the Confederate States and the United States of America. I thought it would be appropriate to have some bacon and eggs for breakfast. Where's the big star? Right there, check it out. Okay. Let's hit the road, but let me tell you right off the bat, we are not going to stop to see a whole lot along the way here in Texas, at least uh, not here at the beginning because the goal is to reach Quartzsite, Arizona before the end of the week. You see, I'm setting your expectations kind of low here, so we are not going to stop at Houston or San Antonio, for example, although I would love to. That would be another time. We'll just uh, see them from the road. As a matter of fact, here we are, approaching Houston. And uh, let me tell you, this city is huge. There is the Budweiser plant. And uh, luckily, traffic is not too crazy here in the early afternoon as we approach downtown. The city seems to go on forever. It is a huge uh, metropolitan area, actually ending here by Katy. At some point, the alarm goes off in my tire pressure monitoring system, uh, particularly on the one tire that wears out unevenly faster than the rest, so I stopped, you know, promptly, but it turned out to be a false alarm. The tire was fine. Apparently, the sensor just lost uh, the wireless connectivity. Almost four hours later, we are arriving at San Antonio. Uh, see the sign for the Alamo? Yeah, everything takes longer with the RV. Here we are, cruising along during rush hour traffic, so close to the city, but uh, don't despair, I will visit San Antonio on the way back to Florida. As the sun begins to set, exhausted, I continue pushing through, and check out all the birds. <laughs> well, the idea is to find a rest area or a truck stop where I can spend the night, but uh, first I want to get out of the city. It would have been really nice to make this part of the drive actually during the day, because it seems to be pretty picturesque. We are entering Texas Hill Country, also considered the beginning of the American Southwest, where we are going actually. Hill Country will have to wait until the next trip this way. I find this rest area, but it is so dark and kind of crowded and off-level. I don't know, I feel kind of intimidated, so I decide to continue. There is a Love's uh, truck stop nearby. Here 
we are arriving by the Love's Truck Stop. Mm, doesn't look uh, very promising. I mean, there are trucks parked outside. Yeah, this place is completely full. Hey! Yeah, I think I'm going to continue. Well, to make a long nocturnal story short, eventually I find this rest area here nicely illuminated and perfectly level. And this is where I'm going to spend the night. Well, good morning from Kerrville, Texas. It is uh, 27 degrees outside. My battery is kind of low, so I'm gonna have to buy a body heater at some time, at some point. Yeah, I kind of killed off my battery last night with the computer and the chargers and the forced air uh, on board furnace. So here we are. As I usually say, good morning. It's freezing cold. It was a very good choice to stay here and pretty picturesque at sunrise. Well, I stayed at this rest area last night. It was full of truckers, but no one bothered me. Now I'm seeing this landscape for the first time since uh, I arrived in the middle of the night. Ooh, look what I found. RV dump station and potable water. Oh. We can continue boondocking. I go to the nearby Lowe's in Curryville to try and use the Wi-Fi and buy this heater for tonight. I got a new propane tank. Yeah, I might as well get some propane too. Also, one of the tanks ran out last night and... Uh, oh well, off we go. Let's continue on our trek west through the great state of Texas. Pretty steep grades here as we drive through hill country. Taking the view here real quick. In Texas, besides the full-service rest areas with bathrooms and Wi-Fi and all that, uh, there are also a bunch of these uh, smaller picnic areas and parking areas where you can take breaks as well. They are not very large, but there are plenty of them. On I-10 in Texas, the speed limit is 80 miles per hour. Well, I can only do 65, so that's that. Okay, here we are, approaching Junction, Texas. Well, this is the park here at Junction, Texas. Very nice. Well, yes, you are actually allowed to camp here for free for up to three nights right here at the Junction City Park, also called Shriner Park. I learned about this place from Kyle and Olivia of Driving and Vibing. Here's the dam on the Llano River that forms Lake Junction. It is pretty picturesque out here. I was going to fly the drone, but we are actually in a no-fly zone because there is an airport nearby. It is so peaceful out here. It would be nice to linger, you know, stay for at least a day. Oh, that's pretty cool. Some tree art. All right, let's continue. I was thinking of having lunch here, but couldn't find any restaurants within walking distance of the park, so uh, let's continue. Hmm, all of a sudden, isn't it starting to look more and more desertic? It goes back and forth, but little by little the trees are becoming smaller and sparser. Well, took a shower, feeling refreshed. Yeah, I'm taking a break every hour or so.
pretty cool rest area here. Now it is really starting to look like the West. The good news is I didn't run out of gas. And here I am with some oil wells, I guess, and also uh, some renewable energy, wind turbines. So as you can see, Texas has all kinds of natural resources. Wind turbines everywhere. And also oil wells and the desolate beauty of the desert. We've got some cows here on the side of the road, so I guess it's not the full-blown desert yet. By the way, we detoured from I-10 a while back, and now we are by this town called Alpine, probably because of all the mountains around it. It is my intention to spend the night at the Marfa Lights viewing area, not far from here. It is so beautiful around here. Well, these are my accommodations for the night here at the Marfa Lights viewing area. Let's go check it out real quick. And the sunset will be happening soon. Okay, this is pretty cool. Yes, in this structure here they have uh, bathrooms and some telescopes to view the lights, I guess. The Chihuahuan Desert. This is where I'll be spending the night. Well, this is where I'm going to sit until I freeze, that is, to watch the supposed uh, Marfa lights that happen here at night. And the sunset is just a few minutes away. The desert turns into such beautiful colors at sunset.
Well, there's quite a few of us now here to see the lights. Even if we don't see the mysterious lights tonight, the sunset alone was probably worth it. Well, it seems to work well. That way we won't be uh, wasting battery tonight. Before we continue, let me tell you about Custom Covers, our sponsor. They build these steel covers to protect your RV from the elements, available in a variety of colors in 29 states. I mean, you gotta check them out. Call Lisa at 501-455-4442 and make sure you ask about the special Traveling Robert discount. Well, needless to say, I didn't see any lights last night, uh, and I left the camera on all night long. I even woke up in the middle of the night because the Mr. Buddy ran out of propane, came out after the moonset, and hmm, nothing. Well, you can't see anything, but there's a train going by. Jesus, another train! Yeah, there were trains running right next to us all night long. There goes another train. Good morning. It's a brand new day here in Western Texas. It is incredibly cold out there, by the way, at least for me, it's 20 degrees Fahrenheit. But uh, what I want to do right now, and you might ask, and can you see it? No, you can't see it because I have all this crap here. Hold on. You might think, why hasn't he put a sticker yet for Alabama or Texas? Well, simple reason. I had misplaced uh, my stickers. <laughs> So today we're gonna put Alabama and Texas and but tomorrow very likely we're also gonna put New Mexico and then we're gonna have the whole the whole south of the United States covered. Okay, here's our little Alabama sticker. And now we're gonna put the big Texas sticker. Okay. Texas it is. Maps filling up. Well, we continue on our journey west through the Chihuahuan Desert, now approaching the town of Marfa. The town is actually uh, mostly famous for its numerous art galleries. We continue. 
continue and take a look at the tethered blimp. We are really close to Mexico here, so I wonder if the blimp is part of a border patrol operation. That's the station the blimp is tethered to. Quick stop here on the side of the road. It is so windy out here. There's a blimp there. Here in the middle of the desert, although it is not, actually it is not as, uh, as desolate as you would think. We're just one mile outside uh, the town of Valentine. And here you have it, Prada Marfa, Ballroom Marfa. Well, here they have some explanation. It's an art uh, production fund. Someone should come with some Windex and clean the glass. Hey, there's me. There's a mirror in the back. Well, there you have it, Prada, in the middle of nada, and say hello to the camera. We continue pushing west. Next up, El Paso, Texas. Here's a pecan farm, lots of them here in Texas. We are approaching Van Horn. Here we rejoin I-10 West and enter the mountain time zone. Check out that train down there. Pretty picturesque uh, picnic area here. Well, that valley down there, that's Mexico. We are finally approaching the border city of El Paso. What I find fascinating about these border towns is that what you see right there, those houses, that's a different country. Uh, that's the wall right there, the border, and Mexico on the other side. Amazing that you can see Ciudad Juarez so close from the expressway. Well, I decided to stay at a campground, you know, get a nice shower, replenish. And uh, here I am at the El Paso uh, KOA. Very nice view of these mountains back here. As you can see, it's almost empty, nearly empty. 
maybe that's another campground next door. And then there's a camping world right behind us. So yeah, this is my site right here, right next to the office. Hopefully I'll get some decent uh, Wi-Fi from that antenna up there. Although the Wi-Fi seemed to have died. Maybe they realized I started uploading a, a video. <laughs> well, let's explore um, a little bit of uh, El Paso with the, with a little bit of sunshine we have left in the three hours. Well, I actually passed by the tourist uh, welcome center and the guy recommended that I take this road, the Woodrow Bing Trans Mountain Drive. But aside from this view here, there is not much to do or see. Uh, well, okay, there is this trail on the Franklin Mountains. Cable car. And there is a cable car, but that is closed today. I told the guy clearly that I wanted to see Mexico. And that's not it. Luckily, I also did my own research. And there is uh, this scenic drive with a couple of scenic overlooks that the GPS is having a hard time finding, but I am bent on locating it. And, uh, well, here we are. There is Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, in the distance. And here's uh, downtown. There's the river and the wall and the monument a la Mexicaneidad and the rest of Juarez, south of the border. Seems to be a popular place with young couples who come to enjoy the scenery. Once again, we see the international bridge and the boundary between the two worlds, two nations. Blocks here. Take the next left onto Rim Road. Okay, let's continue. Pretty fancy neighborhood. This other park here. Let's check it out. This is uh, Tom Lee Park. And this seems here to be a pretty Ritzy neighborhood. I've got this uh, obelisk. The southern tip of the Franklin Range of the Rocky Mountains. Pretty cool. Okay, here we've got a better view of downtown El Paso. And of course, behind downtown, that is Mexico. Okay, let's go downtown. How it's first in Spanish and then in English. You know, like in Miami. I parked by this square called uh, San Jacinto Plaza. Fun fact, back in the day there were real alligators in this pond here. 
Also, the plaza was renovated recently after many years of abandonment and disrepair. Nowadays, instead of beggars and pickpockets, we have street musicians. At least one. Well, let's explore downtown a little bit. There's uh, this interesting looking street here called, uh, most appropriately, El Paso Street. The Mexican influence is very, very palpable all over this area. Even though my common sense is kind of telling me to, to go back to the car. Let's walk around a little more. Actually, I decided to continue exploring a little more by car. Many of the shops were closing down and downtown was getting a little more solitary. So. Union Plaza. But before calling it a night, I want to see a historic house, the Pancho Villa yeah. Stash, house. Stash House. And also this area right by the border called Chihuahuita. This uh, historic site, Casa Clandestina de Pancho Villa. There you go. Terminal de Autobuses, El Tiradero Market. Where you wanted to see the wall? That's the wall. Yep, on the other side, there's a railroad track and then the Rio Grande. Night falls, I return to the campground. Goodbye, Texas. We'll be back. That was El Paso in three or four hours, actually. See you tomorrow. Over the next few videos, we are going to do like my new song. Driving through New Mexico, Arizona, even California. I'm gonna, gonna get my kids on 66. The mountains and the desert are my fix Driving to the west in my RV Is where I wanna be There, now you know what's up ahead, so stay tuned If you have enjoyed traveling with us Make sure you are subscribed And check out my other videos Also, share it with your friends Spread the word and leave me a comment Now, if you really, really liked it You have a chance to show your support At patreon.com slash Traveling Robert. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road.